Bosco Bites brought to you from Don Bosco Youth Services, Episode 1, Part 8. Today we look at how Don Bosco meets Luis Orione, three notebooks of sins, and how Don Bosco didn't need to read it. This is his story. The year is 1885. September 4th, a boy walked beside a donkey along the road to Bohera in the province of Pavia. The boy was going to become a monk. The donkey carried his trunk of personal effects and when he reached the priory, he knocked on the door. The door opened and a monk asked, Are you Luis Orione? Yes, the boy replied. Well, we were expecting you. Wonderful! Come in. You can bring in your trunk. Sit down. This evening you can sleep on your mattress. But in the coming days, you will have to sleep on a straw mattress like all the sons of St. Francis of Assisi. But how did the young Louis make this choice? Why did he want to enter a monastery? He wanted to become a priest. But in those days in, of economic difficulty, very few could afford to enter into the seminary. And so his parish priest, from where the young Louis came, found a place for this lad in this priory at Bohera. By the second evening at the priory, Louis began sleeping on a straw mattress. This and other penances like getting up in the middle of the night, kneeling on a cold floor, were too much stringent for just a 13-year-old boy. After some months, during the Holy Thursday procession, in a cold church, Louis collapsed and fainted. The monks called a physician. He had a very high fever and pneumonia. Sad to say, there wasn't much hope that the boy would live. But in the following days, the crisis passed. The physician, however, dissuaded him from continuing at the monastery. The young 13-year-old Louis wept, but he accepted the decision and he returned home. A few months later, his parish priest called the young Louis and said that if at the next autumn he felt well enough, he would send him to Don Bosco and Don Bosco would accept him at the oratory of Waldoco. Don Bosco by this time was a very well-known priest all over Turin and outside the outskirts and on the outskirts of the city, he had built a large house that opened its doors to poor boys without families, without homes, and without food. In other cities, Don Bosco had already built schools, colleges, workshops. Remember, the year is 1885. The Salesian congregation that he founded spread over the world, helping and loving, assisting poor youngsters. And Luis Orione, who had heard already of Don Bosco and all that he did, just could not wait to meet Don Bosco. Fortunately, the young Luis recovered from his sickness. He returned home. And then Luis was taken to Turin. He entered the oratory of Don Bosco. We are in October 1886. The boy met Don Bosco and felt a strong desire to open up his heart to him in confession. But Don Bosco was old, he was sick, he was suffering, he was exhausted after spending himself or his boys. He was forced to conserve his, en his energies in order to make himself available to hear the confessions of the Salesians and the final year boys. But somehow, this 14-year-old found the opportunity to meet Don Bosco. He mingled with those who were the privileged ones. He prepared himself seriously for his confession. And
And during my examination of conscience, the young Oriona said, I wrote three notebooks of sins. I accused myself of all the sins in the book and all that I had committed during the 13 years of my life, including, he says, I withheld the salary of the workers, I oppressed the weak. The only question was, have you murdered anyone? And he said, no. And so with these three notebooks of sins, he garnered all his energy, put his books in his pocket, and he went to Don Bosco's room. And when his turn came, Don Bosco welcomed him. Good Luis, I'm happy you've come. Now give me your sins. The young Luis's jaw dropped. How could Don Bosco know about the notebooks? The boy took out the first book and gave it to Don Bosco. Without even reading it, Don Bosco tore it into small pieces and threw it into the waste basket. And now, give me the others, he said. Luis took the other two notebooks from his pocket, handed it over to the priest. You've made your confession. Don't think about what you wrote, said Don Bosco. And with a smile, he suggested, this is how we shall remember each other as friends, always friends. Luis would cherish that friendship as a real gift, but also as a reassurance in times of difficult times. A year and a half later in January 1888, Don Bosco was sinking. Everyone knew that Don Bosco's end was near. No one in the oratory felt like shouting and playing. There was silence. On the morning of January 29th, Don Bosco's secretary, Father Joe Kimberto, went to the sacristy to celebrate the Holy Mass. He was accompanied by six young boys who wanted to serve Mass, and among them was Luis Orione. On the altar next to the chalice was a note on which was written, O oh Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, Mary, help of Christians, St. Francis of Sales, our patron, we the undersigned and the names of the six boys among them was Luis. Pray for the health of our beloved father and superior, Don Bosco, and we offer you our lives. Beautiful words. And we offer you our lives. Six young boys offering themselves was an immense sacrifice because they truly wanted Don Bosco's well-being. But that was not to be. The Lord had already decided otherwise. Two days later, Don Bosco died on January 31st, 1888. Tell my boys that I will wait for them in heaven was the message that Don Bosco left them. Having finished his high school, the young Louis was undecided whether he should become a Salesian or whether he should go and join the seminary. Initially, he thought he was being tempted by the devil. He tried to fight it with all his might, but there was nothing he could do. The doubts continually returned. He went to the tomb of Don Bosco. He sat down there, he knelt, he prayed, he wept. And then, like any young boy, he made a pact with Don Bosco. He said, if I have to enter the seminary, then three signs must be fulfilled. One, to enter the seminary without answering any questions in writing. Two, to receive a cassock without his measurements being taken. And third, to witness the conversion of his father. A pact he made at the tomb of Don Bosco. Some days later, the bishop accepted him. He accepted the young Louis into the seminary without asking him any questions. The mother of a boy to whom Louis gave tuitions gave him a cassock without taking his measurements. And his father became a practicing Catholic as soon as he saw his son enter the seminary. Now the path was clear, 
the pact that he made at the tomb of Don Bosco was evident. God wanted him to be in the seminary and not as a Salvation. The young boy studied at the seminary. He became Father Luis. And after some years, he founded a congregation that was called the Little Work of Divine Providence. He started orphanages. He started homes to care for the poor, centers of professional training, missions, agricultural schools. But the young Luis Orione never forgot his origins. He would say, all that you see in me is the fruit of the three years I spent at the oratory of Don Bosco. Father Orione often repeated, my vocation was nurtured in an atmosphere that was saturated with piety and the love of God. I found around Don Bosco an aura of holiness. May 16, 2004, Pope John Paul II declared Father Luis Orione a saint. Wow! Let's rewind. Let's go back. Let's go back to that year 1886, 85, 86. When he comes to meet Don Bosco. And those beautiful words that he will say, All that you see in me is the fruit of the three years that I spent at the oratory of Don Bosco. My vocation was nurtured in an atmosphere that was saturated with piety and love of God. I found around Don Bosco an aura of holiness. He recalled this often and repeated it often in reality. Father Luis Orione was accepted into the annex of the festive oratory it was also called the oratory because Don Bosco wanted the atmosphere to be the same as the festive oratory. So Don Bosco, Don Bosco wanted his institutions to become a home. A home in which the pedagogical environment had definitely the Christian sense, the Christian teaching, but more so in the human sense in general. But how was the idea of accepting and welcoming youngsters born? Don Bosco started the oratory as an answer to certain things that were happening. One, he looked at the lives of young people and found that they had lost a connect with God. And so he wanted to introduce them into a deep practice of religion, of experiencing God. Two. He wanted to help them to use their leisure time well. And so he proposed to them wholesome cultural activities. Third, Don Bosco would say in the memoirs of the oratory that the principal purpose of the oratory was to gather poor and abandoned youngsters. Don Bosco would provide them an education for those who were unemployed those without parents, he gave them a home that nurtured them. So he looked after their religious needs, he looked after their social and recreational needs, he looked after their educational needs. Don Bosco always wanted his boys to be good Christians and honest citizens. My dear friends, of Don Bosco, my dear past pupils, my dear cooperators, the members of the Salesian family, to you youngsters who are listening to this. Don Bosco surrounded himself with an aura of holiness, of piety. Don Bosco catered to the needs of those who were most in need. He was a father, a friend, a teacher. When I look back, when I look back at my own schooling, my I was fortunate to be in a Salesian school and definitely like Luis Orione, I too can say the best years of my life go back to my years as a student in a Salesian institution, surrounded by an aura of holiness, surrounded by an aura of cheerfulness. 
an educational system that nurtured me and nurtured so many past pupils. The Lord is challenging you and me today, my dear friends, that we need to take the mission of Don Bosco. We need to reach out to youngsters today. The same needs that youngsters had at the time of Don Bosco are the same needs that young people have today, perhaps maybe in greater intensity. But there is always an answer. The answer that Don Bosco gave us by setting up an order to your home that welcomed, a school that educated, a church that evangelized, and a playground where friends could meet. May God bless you.